Hi, John. Yes. Hello. How you doing? Good man. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks a lot for calling me because I told you before it's yeah. very good to deal with Instagram in these days. So thanks. Technology, right? It's always uh, for or against in different ways depending on what day it is. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, enjoying the wonderful weather we're having. Um, wishing I was in a beer garden, but you know, making the most of my garden, which has got a mattress behind me, so you know, rock and roll. That's good. How you doing, um, bro? Yeah, man, all good. I mean, I've been I've been around a bit. That's why I'm starting to be be more colorful than the last months. And you know, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a privilege to being able to go out again. And 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 I quite love it to be honest with you. And yeah. you know, it's a uh, it's an interesting time. Let's say that you know, right? What what do you think? Like, how did you how did you uh, you know? deal with the reality in the last two months if i can ask you yeah it's been it's been pretty crazy i mean i um i literally just started with my new role with hackney um in sort of like the middle of march um so you know i was excited ready to sort of hit the ground running um you know be out in all the great pubs again and uh, you know doing the thing especially with the weather getting so nice and it's been over the last couple of months it's been uh, frustrating to not be out there right but um yeah you know trying to make the most of it i've i've, I've taken up running um which i didn't know i could do so that's been fun uh, I'm still alive, so, you know, but, um, yeah, you know, just making the most of the situation. Yeah, this is great. It's like the community has been very, very, very compact and, you know, uh, welcoming to everyone, uh, you know, opinions and ideas and, and even like feelings. I have people yeah. just, like, you know, Alex from, from London Field, she was like calling me like, hi, oh, hi. The best. <laughs> how are you, dude? Are you fine? I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, this and that. But um, yeah, again, uh, starting with this project, it helped me. It helped me a lot, and you know, it's something that I didn't even know it was possible to do, like um, create a sub digital sort of 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 don't want to say community, but circle of friends for now. And yeah. you know, it's been interesting enough, and 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 I don't see all of this going away. I just see these you know, uh, attaching to our existence, our normal life as our extra tool that we now know it, it works. Sure. Yeah, it's expanding out, right? That's how it is. And, you know, it's a good way to sort of build up the connections. And I think you're doing a great job of it, man. I've enjoyed watching it. You've had some superstars on, so it's, it's a pleasure to be part of it. Did you, did you have lots of, like, Zoom meetings and drinkings and stuff like that recently? Uh, yeah, a lot with friends. Talk about superstars. Gabe just joined, so hi. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been, you know, it's kind of been surreal, um, you know, having the sort of friendship connections, communication and, and trying to have a social life over a camera. Uh, it's not something I'm too used to, but uh, I'm good at taking selfies, apparently. But, uh, you know, I'm not very good at sort of like talking to a camera. Very easily, so <laughs> it's, it's an interesting thing. But um, yeah, man, I mean, like you say, it's just taking a, a difficult situation, making the most of it. I think we're lucky to live in the age where technology uh, supports us in times of difficulty, which we are in now. So, you know, 15, 20 years ago, we wouldn't be so lucky. So, again, I guess you always have to sort of, uh, you know, take the positives for, for how lucky we are to have to go through. For sure. Well, you know, again, um, when I was chatting about interesting things uh, in both times, when are we going to go out from here? And even in these days, because some people still work. Things are going around anyway, uh, you know, companies uh, producing and, 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 you know, looking after the products. So when I was asking to myself, who shall I ask a bit about how is the sales game for beer in London? In your name, in my head, and in many other people's head, came straight away, like, boom, bang, that's yeah. the game. Well, it's appreciated, mate, you know, but, you know, it's, it's all the great people out there that make it, make it what it is, you know, so it's a massive part of it. Do you remember the, the Stone um, events at the, I think it was the Strong Room, right? Yeah, 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 of right. course, yeah. 
that was that was a fun night. I don't know if I don't know if my uh, my bar tab at the end of the night was a fun thing, but you know, I, I dealt with it. <laughs> That was a lovely night. I really enjoyed it. And there were people that were from the community. There were people that were completely, you know, um, uh, just new of, of, of some of the stuff. And, 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 you know, Dubai was a kind of busy, but then you need to work with what you have and, and, and anyway, make people energetic and things. So that was brilliant. That was nice. And I really, really enjoyed it. And, okay. and, you know, if I will ask you a question because we didn't have time, is how, what is, what, like, how did you start your craft beer journey? Because this is something that, you know, it, it really fascinated me. Yeah, yeah, no, it, I was very lucky actually. Um, I grew up, grew up uh, in Sheffield, uh, up in Yorkshire, uh, which is a very sort of like beer heavy city anyway. Um, when I was growing up, I, I didn't really sort of pay too much attention to beer, uh, mainly because of. You know, the, the general sense was craft beer was very, um, was very on a high level in Sheffield, but it was still such a small community that you didn't, you know, at a young age, you didn't really sort of fall into it. Uh, but for university, um, there was a guy called, that was called, sadly passed away now, called Dave Wickett, who set up Callum Island Brewery in Sheffield. And it was one of the first breweries to really start the independent um, vibe of making, using American hops and, and, and bringing that in a cast format in like the late 80s um, into the UK. Uh, and he actually met a business partner in upstate New York um, who'd come over to visit his pub, the Fat Cat in Sheffield. Um, and they hit it off and decided they wanted to open a British pub in upstate New York where the business owner from the US was from. Um, and it started by bringing over British students to sort of get trained up in hospitality, work in the bar, the floor, the kitchen. Um, and then, you know, slowly but surely, that just the, the passion for beer from what was happening in the US with the passion for the knowledge of what was in the UK sort of fused together. Um, and then it became more of a beer bar, sort of craft beer bar. Uh, wow. And I went there in 2008 and, you know, just fell into it, man. Like, you know, I didn't know anything about beer really before that. And I remember having my first, uh, my first beer that, you know, the, the beer that sort of changes everything. Um, for me, it was a beer uh, called uh, Flower Power from a brewery called Ithaca from the state. And it was the first time I tasted hops and knew what, knew what that could taste like. So it started from there. And um, I managed to do two years out there, over separate years. Uh, met a lot of great people, uh, worked with so many great breweries and for events and stuff like that, and uh, it became a game changer. And then after that, you know, that it was the sky was the limit, really. It was just, you just kind of want to keep learning, keep exploring, um, and just keep evolving, really. And, and to this day, that's still the that's still the passion. So. Wow. So let me put it this way: I'm sure that at that time you were drinking lots of beer, and in these days, uh, apparently did a comeback like West Coast IPA, something like that, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. You know, so, Black, uh, Black Arte is the next, right? That's, you hear it, you hear it here first. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, I really wanted to go for this week for some iconic London beers. And I was thinking that one of the most iconic that you can find in London in these days still, I think it's from, yeah, 2014. So yeah. a couple of years now. And, and, you know, I really wanted to give a tribute to Bosco from Pressure Drop. And I think it's a American Amarillo IPA. Yep. Yeah. And, 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 you know, uh, what, what I was asking as well is, I'm sure you have a beer as well with you, right? Yeah, you yeah, know, on brand, of course, right? Um, you know, it's, it was actually Boogie Van that was the first beer that really made me take, um, not, I wouldn't say seriously, but made me sort of stand up and notice how me for as a brewer, for the quality of the brew. Um, so, yeah, now I feel lucky to be able to be the person that represents it. Or it. That's that. <laughs> It's, it's one of the most respected brewery because, you know, um, I think, let me put it this way. The people you're going to work with are some of the most respected, nicest, and more, uh, you know, when you go in a pub, let's say in Haggerston, right? And you see Tom's coming up and you're like, all right, okay, like, these guys are in the place now. I'm feeling better. This is the right place to be. I can go to see them, have a chat with them, and talking about beer, talking about London, talking about East London, talking about life. It's great. So you are a beautiful addiction to the team. And, 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 and I mean, come on, man. You know. It means a lot, man. It means a lot. You know, and, yeah, it's, it's a great team. And, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've become friends with the guys over the years. Um, my, my, my co-partner in crime and now in sales, uh, Dan Sharp, is a, is a great guy. And so I'm looking to work with him. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a good time. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to things getting fully going and some exciting years ahead. So, so you were saying before then, then you were in the US and then, uh, and then you 
considered to move back to the UK or you, you have to do it? How, 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 and, 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 yeah. And, through, um, yeah, so through the internship I did, it was for a year. So I did it for uh, 08 to 09 and then went back to sort of finish up university. And I was lucky where there was still a loophole where you could go back and do a second visa uh, to the same place, which changed quite quickly after that. Funny enough, but, uh, not probably because of me, but a lot of people did the same thing. So I was lucky to have that experience, the dual experience. And, um, you know, the uh, on the second year, when I knew by the time my visa was ending, I couldn't extend it or stay any longer. It was about thinking about what's next. And, uh, one of the guys had worked with me my first year out there. He obviously made it back in the UK now, making a life of himself properly. And he he, he joined Brewdog uh, in the early days. And uh, when I when I tasted Brewdog beers the first time round, um, the early stuff like Hardcore IPA, um, Chaos Theory, which funnily enough was available in Sainsbury's, which was crazy at the time, but Nelson and Nelson single hop IPA in Sainsbury's. But they were like the first taste of like, oh my God, there's actually something happening at home that we fell into in the US. Um, yep. so, so then the opportunity uh, came to leave the US. I flew home. I literally landed home. And I was home for a day. And then I picked up my bags and moved up to Scotland. Uh, I lived in Glasgow, which was an amazing experience. And then, and then I went on to Aberdeen for a little while as well, the, uh, the original bar. So, you know, it, 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 the journey just sort of carried on, on, the, on back on the, uh, the, the home side. Of the, uh, <laughs> and, then, wow. and then it went from there. And, and let me put it in this way. Like, when you were working um, in the... Uh, backside of the bar would you ever consider then you were building up skills then one day could help you on selling the beers to the pub yeah um to be honest with you it never really crossed my mind at the time i think when i was um when i was like 21 probably up to the age of like 25 26 uh all i was trying to do is sort of you know make it build a career in the bar side of things um but i think the reason why i attached myself so much to the bar side of things and also you know, the community within that by being a bar, tender, system manager, general manager, because that I saw that as my biggest connection towards the passion I had for beer. Um, mm. And it was only sort of like during my time when I moved to London, when I was, uh, you know, the manager at Houston Tap, uh, where I, <laughs> I, met, I, met, I met and experienced some amazing people that, um, you know, that showcased that you could do, uh, you, could, you could showcase your passion for beer in a different way on the other side of the bar. And, and, you know, a big shout out to the guys from Lagunitas back in the day, um, Tim from Founders, you know, and also some of the OG crew from Camden Town Brewery as well when they were in the early days, early days of sales. Like, they became really good friends. Um, and I sort of realized that you could do it from a different light. So I always sort of thought because I hosted events in the US, um, I always wanted to do brewery events. I was always quite, I always wanted to be positive about the connection between the customer, the product and the experience. So for me, I found it quite easy to transfer those skills into into sales really and i think what i learned is you can be yourself and do that job you know i just always thought beer sales or sales per se was about having to follow a script to sort of achieve something but i i, I found quite quickly that you can actually be yourself and you know when you meet so many other great people in the beer industry that are themselves and it's being themselves that showcases the quality that you then get in the bottle the can or the glass most importantly then that's when you realize that it's uh, it's an industry you want to be part of long term no matter what role Hundred percent. You know, like you, it's it's fun that you mentioned before Lagunitas, and I could put in the in in there um, everyone that I met from Brooklyn when I was working on Mother Kelly's, or you know, um, there were people around that let me think, let me understand that. Yes, of course, is a sales job. There are numbers that you need to look after. There are you know some some duties that you. You can't just say, no, I'm not going to do that. And, but you can do it with your own style and, and you can put your own personality in there, which is the game changer. And that's running through my next question or potential that you could be like, so when someone like you then have the experience um, to being also like behind the bar and everything, you trying to read who's in front of you and I'm sure building relationship, like things like that, right? How, yeah. what, what do you think? Like, would you say you have like an idea, like a plan? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think the first sort of thing that I always thought that came to mind was like from being, again, the transferable skills of being a bar manager to do beer sales in, in the beer industry. The fact that you always remember the sales reps that made an impression on you and you always remember the ones that didn't. Um, so you're just like, well, just make sure you do it like the ones that you enjoyed to deal with and definitely don't be like the ones you didn't. Um, 
And thankfully, the ones he didn't were few, you know, were, 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 were with the minor. <laughs> it wasn't, there wasn't many, but he just, he just sort of picked it up that way. But I think also, like, the passion for, like, the customer's passion for, like, engagement, enjoyment. I mean, for example, when I was at UC Tap, you know, um, 27 keg lines, eight cast lines, um, and, you know, UC Tap being the second bar to open after the rake of the craft beer bar in London, it meant that, you know, you would get in, like, you would get in the wave of all the people that would come. And when you meet people that travel from the States or around the world just to come to that bar, it just makes you realise, like, how amazing it is. So you, can, you learn a lot off, off the customers as well, definitely. Um, and you never stop learning, I don't think. I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's always so important to just never think you're the best at what you're at because at the end of the day, you can always learn from so many great people and that, and that just helps you get better yourself. Nice. I really like what you're saying. And, and would you potentially consider um, as easy as going to a craft beer bar, going to a not craft beer bar and, you know, present your product like do you think it's going to be hard for them to understand that you are carrying an entire culture uh, into a sample, into a can or into a bottle? Like, yeah. what is in your experience um, relation to that you can deal with not craft beer people within the craft beer sales job? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think there's so many more gateway beers now that and I think with certain breweries, like, you know, I, um, you know, Brooklyn, um, in terms of when they came to the UK market and again, having fantastic people working for them, as we know. Um, you know, I think I think that, that that's a, that's a brand that sort of like engages people quite naturally, whether they sort of like you know had a previous sort of experience with craft beer or not. Um, I think more so now from the UK side, like you know Beaver Town, you know we all know that so many people now just see neck oil and they know neck oil. They might not try any other beers, but that's just like how they know. So everyone has like a different intro or ent uh, entry into the beer into beer. And I think generally speaking, anyone who um, who gets into it that finds it enjoyable and exciting, it just pushes them on to learn more and more. Um, so I think I think you get a balance really, but I think certainly over the last sort of five years or six years in London that you notice more and more people just being more open minded to trying things now. And I think the the variety selection, amazing bottle shops, amazing tap rooms, amazing breweries, amazing um, you know uh, bars and, and groups, independent groups that are expanding out. It's, it's a sign that you know the course is there for people to be more open minded to everything. So I think, I think it, it it makes quite an interesting environment because it means everyone's a bit more open minded to listen to what you have to say now and and the information you have to, to, to approach um to just add to that i mean you know from my my time in sales over the last five years now i mean i worked in bars for I guess, seven eight years in terms of the beer industry um and i'm now five years in sales so i'm always catching it up which is strange because i always feel the bar is the foundation but um you know i, I started with uh crafted exports from new york who um, carried um, some really great East, uh, East American brands, uh, such as like Captain Lawrence, which is like Street Harpoon from Boston. Um, and so that was my first sort of dip in my toe in the water, where people in the UK um, didn't really sort of know too much about those breweries, really, because the only breweries you sort of experienced if you went to the States and went to Boston, were in New York. Um, so you were really sort of beginning the education of the story, so that very sort of like on the basic foundation level about everything to do with the culture. Um, what makes that brewery so, you know, I, I harp into around 1986, I was born that, in that year, so that was a little easy to connect. And then uh, and then from there, you know, obviously uh, I joined Stone, that was a dream job for me, uh, because Stone was one of the breweries that got me into beer. I did quite a lot of events at Stone, not just in America, also in UK, we used to do a Stone Fest every year. Um, and that was a dream, and, and they, were, they were great to work for. Unfortunately, the Berlin project was a little bit too big too soon, uh, but I learned so much there, and, uh, and that was amazing. And now... Coming, moving back to um, you know with, with uh, Hackney now, I just feel like London's given London's given me so much in terms of enjoyment, the beer, career, uh, the beer heritage, the beer culture, the people. The, and Hackney Brew is such a such a lovely, friendly, uh, great brew to work for. That I'm now excited to almost give a little bit back to the London beer scene because I feel like you know I've I've lived the dream with some great American brands, but now it feels the time's right to to, to bring it home a little bit. So. Wow, I like that. So let me put it this way. Uh, you are going now, to, you're, you're going to approach like a slightly different game in terms of, you know, um, as you said, London Brewery, um, very, very like much, um, you know, uh, I can say attached to a specific area with all the pros about Hackney and things. And in the same time, you're going to work in a highly competitive, um, massively, um, you know, um, I can say, um, attach to contacts and, and, and other breweries and things. And all, this is always fascinated me because, you know, 
Um, in a place like Mavicelli, we were able to shift quite a lot of beer from many different places. So it was really hard to find maybe something that, you know, didn't have a spot available in there. And, you know, my point is like, I see breweries keep coming and I see bars not coming that much. So there's going to be a time where, you know, you have to do more. You need to do the extra. I don't want to ask you to tell me your secrets, your work mm -hmm. secrets and stuff, but what it could be like an extra, like a positive extra that you think a bartender, our manager will really appreciate for someone and trying to do business with. Yeah, I mean, I think what I found quite natural and also lucky is that the majority of people I've worked with, um, you know, from the sales side into bars, is it, I've, I've made so many great friends from, you know, it's like people I would never have maybe known or had a chance to actually spend time with, um, you know, and, and that's the variety of like bars that stock, you know, from the niche side, but also from like certain bars like the Lexington, for example, that are sort of like a late night spot, which we all know how fun that is. Um, yep. but have, a great, have a great beer selection. So I've got to meet a lot of different people that, have, you know, have a lot of different passion and a lot of different interests in terms of what connects them to the place they work. So I always think just, just getting to know the person first and foremost is, is first of all the thing you should do because at the end of the day it's a people's business um you know personality is what leads the passion for what goes on the bar what gets served over the bar and certainly what gets repeated ordered over the bar it's all about engagement and, and um and like how people sort of interact and, and appreciate each other and i think for me that's all it really is i just i just think it's just about being personable getting to know people and caring and you know also asking people how their day was because you know that goes a long way and you know and that's, how, that's what it's about i mean We've all got jobs to do, business is business, but I think the personal touch and the connection that, that makes that is, is the most important thing, I think, that, that, that uh, that's the extra mile in my mind. And I have lots of friends that, you know, always told me, oh, the best, best job in the world must be like selling beer because you're always out, you're going to visit all the pubs, all the bars in the, in the town, you get to travel potentially, and, you know, you're meeting lots of people, friends, and, and you know, like, um, you can walk into five different places. Maybe, maybe you're going to apply for a half pint of beer. Maybe, if you're very unlikely. And <laughs> is it all about, is it all fun? Is it all going out, get mad, get smashed, stay late? Or yeah. I mean, I'm not, get, I'm not getting any younger, man, so I'll tell you that. <laughs> it was a little easier when I was 27. But um, no, nah, I mean, you know, it's, it's great. And like the, obviously the excitement and the fun is a big, a big part of it. But I think the longer you do it and the more you're in it, it just becomes your life and your way of life. So it's not so much about, I just want to go out and just like, you know, live the glamour side of it. It's more about the foundation of sort of why you do it and working hard. I think you also sort of like at first, you, it's a bit like, it, like you said, a bit of a kid in a candy store mentality. But at the end of the day, it, it, I think there's a balance between having a lot of fun and, and also getting a job done. Uh, and if you can't do both, then unfortunately, it's not going to be a very successful long-term role for you. So I think it's just about trying to find balance. But obviously, balance comes with trial and error, uh, as with experience. So, you know, I think uh, I certainly I certainly think I'm a, I'm a bit more mature today than I probably was when I started five years ago in the video game, put it that way. <laughs> but something that I learned um, from a very, very short sales um, experience when, when I was with Aura Brewing, um, it was... Do not send emails on a Monday uh, morning, early afternoon. Is it? Is it? Yeah. It's true, right? Also, don't try and sell beer on a Friday afternoon either. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it's just, oh, it's it's just, it's just take a look and you can figure it out, right? It's just go in and go in and support your key accounts. Go and have a good time with the people you work with on a Friday, but certainly don't try and get them to sit down and have a chat with you across the. Yeah. Very it, true. Just, yeah, and again, when I said to you about you know the experience from being in bars, that's. That's the flip reverse nature right there. So. And, and, you know, another thing that I always um, notice is most of, uh, you know, sales reps or anyway, people involved with the sales game in beer um, tend to connect and communicate exclusively with um, managers and decision makers. And something that I remember from you when you were at the strong room on that event, you knew everyone that were working in there. Like, you, it, it was almost feel like then you were doing some shifts there because you were knowing the people and the people were happy to support you. Extra glass, jug of water, 
you know, um, and make sure that everything was moved. So as a salesperson, as a sales um, 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 rep, do you think it's important to give credit and, and, and it, a bit of importance of attention to bartenders and rest of the team as well, or just yeah. manager? I think it's just like a many, many individual nights with a lot of whiskey. Uh, but no, in all, in all seriousness, like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing is for me, like, I don't, I don't come from like a very sort of like particular corporate sort of background or upbringing. I think like, you know, I've worked my way up the ladder and I started in bars, like part-time, full-time bar staff, duty manager, supervisor, whatever. Um, and then, you know, in sales, it's like, you know, when you first start, nothing's handed to you. There's no expectations. So for me, it doesn't matter whether it's the manager, the owner, whatever. I've, I've, I've got engagement time for anyone I meet. Uh, and we, we, all share, we all share a lot of different stories, a lot of similar stories. Um, but yeah, because at the end of the day, it's the front line that makes it, you know, it's all good and well having a great manager, but a great manager is nothing without a great team. Um, and that's something I've always believed. And, you know, I've been lucky to work in the bars I worked at, um, you know, Houston Tap, like I mentioned, um, Small Bar Bristol for a small part, which was amazing. My man Bruce, who, who used to be my actual, who used to be my ops manager when I was at Brewdog, actually. Um, and then Draft House as well, you know, Charlotte Street had a great team. I mean, we all know Moz, right? And, and I think, you know, I, I don't want to, Moz is the man to talk about the, 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 the steps of hospitality, but, you know, Moz is a breath of fresh air, and I think that sort of personality starts from being the bartender, and it, and it leads from there. So. 100%. And, you know, again, you are considering yourself an integral part within the beer community, right, in terms of, um, I'm sure, like, your friends are brewers, your friends are salespeople, your friends are... Um, managers in pubs and everything so is there a community like a beer community in London because it's just about Londoners today watching this so maybe some people don't understand or they don't really get like beer culture like how does it work like yeah. you, we got friends in common we go out with people that are also workers in the beer community right is it how, is it how it works right yeah, I mean, I, I think the beer community is everything, honestly. Like, you know, in London, I mean, the amount of people I've met through so many different roles or ways, and then they move into different jobs and whatever, but it, the connection always stays there. And uh, it's just, it's not, there's something better than just being out on the streets of London and just running into, like, another rep or, you know, or someone from a bar or whatever, or, or someone from a wholesaler. Again, I was lucky to work with some really great distributors with Adams and James Clay, um, Yoruboo's uh, Four Pure for a little bit when they were carrying our US stuff. And, you know, and you get just the spectrum of everyone doing such a great job and working so hard. And, and, it, and it's just so nice to sort of that, that culture and that connection. I mean, obviously, there's a big sort of beer WhatsApp group and everyone on there is looking after each other, whether that's people in sales, brewers, um, you know, people uh, in every, every department. And, you know, and it's just a really good sort of everyone looks out for each other. Everyone, everyone looks after each other. And, you know, there's no sort of real over the top competitive streak. It's, it's, you know, everyone's got a job to do, but there's enough room for everyone to sort of have presence and, and showcase what they do and just if you know if you have like a beer event you, you can always guarantee using the strong rooms as an example that you mentioned i mean uh, the crowd looked great but the crowd has built up the majority of people that work in bars or in the beer industry um you know for sales or, or, or brewers or vice versa obviously for yourself so it was um yeah you know and i think that that's that's a great example um you know if you throw an event there's so many events happening now i mean like five six years ago there was only like a handful of like events that were happening, and, they, and I think in a way they were a bit more, they were so much more impactful because you know there was there were the few and far between. Um, but now there's so much happening all the time. But there's, there's there's room for people to always support and share. I mean, there's been some nights where I've gone between like four or five different beer events in one night, you know, because that's the point. And it, and it's great because it's it's kind of like thinking like it's almost like from a youthful teenager mentality. It's like it's like so many all, all your different friends are having different house parties one night. Like you, just, yeah. you know, what better thing than going to do every single one? I, I did a massive mistake once the first time that I was going to the London Craft Beer Festival because I went there with uh, very good friends of mine, which is it is quite to beer, but not that much. Plus, it doesn't really follow, um, you know, uh, or like social media, doesn't really have many friends with him. So we went there because he never went to a beer festival before and I never been to that specific one. So when we were there together, he was just like, Oh, I'm sure you're going to find someone to talk with in here, right? I was just like, yeah, I mean, I think so. Yeah, potentially. I haven't seen the guy. I really haven't seen. I just said to him, we're going to meet another time, man, because this yeah. is not the day. And, and <laughs> it was just like, 
I honestly think you are surrounded by people that knows you well, friends like, you know, me or something. So um, just, just go, man. We, we'll see another time. And it was a constant, non-stop seeing people that I haven't seen it from a from long time, maybe because they're based in South London or West London, not my areas. So it was just like, wow, wow. And, and you know, salespeople were talking with salespeople. That's another thing, as you just mentioned. The level of competition, his heart, is, is high in terms of there are some very, very, like, desiderable taps out there, I'm sure, like, for, uh, you know, um, rate of sales, whatever jargon you want to talk. But you're friends with them. You go yeah. out and, and you're not fighting against them. Not many industries are like that. No, and it, and and that's I think that's the best way of showcasing what the, you know the the industry's like, and like the London was so lucky to have that, and I think it's, it's grown around the UK as well, obviously. But the whole point is, it's like everyone, you know, like like I say, everyone's got a job to do, but it, it everyone wants to share a beer with you, uh, whether it's on their event or your event or whatever, and and you know, it's sometimes really nice as well when you you put beer into a bar, whether it's a new bar or an established bar, and, and you see your beer alongside you know, friends' beers, because it's, you know, it's just a nice feeling, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been really cool, um, and honestly, it's, it's just been like, a, it's been a, a really sort of, like, heartwarming um, um, opportunity to sort of do it, really, and, and, and to keep doing it, and, and obviously the breweries and the brands I work for, I've been very lucky to, to sort of work with the ones that have made me passionate to sort of do it, on, you know, to have it from that level as well, from, from the brewery side, but also, yeah, doing it, doing it with your friends, and like I say, in working with, with Hackney now, I've got a lot of friends in that brewery, so, Again, it's like working with friends on that on the on the inside as well. Yeah. Fantastic, and and like what like I mean, what is the level of London beers right now in terms of is a is a competitive game in terms of other cities within the UK and uh, is it could do could, could go better in terms of event as well bars like overall beer. What's London like? Yeah, I mean, I think I think London now is just with so many uh, in every sort of region and district of London. It's like there's just more and more happening. There's, like I say, there's more tap rooms opening everywhere for breweries. I mean, breweries. I think it's been it's crazy to think how many breweries have opened over the last five years. I'm not going to try and give a number because I'll be wrong, but you know, it's just been amazing. And you know, I think when I think about like Bermondsey Beer Mile when that first started, that really set a tone for how an area can sort of just boom um, from not really having much to having an attraction where, you know, it goes, it's not just even people just in the beer industry, like people have to like go there and have like their, you know, stag do, bachelor party, whatever you want to call it, Hindu. Um, and it, it's just like a really great way for people to sort of support a mix of really good local breweries um, and also get a taste of it and also get a feel of it. And I think a lot of that sort of like, from my experience in the States, like in America, that's, that's kind of like such a given, like, you know, breweries have a tap room and people go to support their local brewery and it builds, it builds from that as a community. And I think uh, that's, something that's really sort of engaged in London heavily now where, you know, on every corner you've got, you've got someone, you know, doing whether it's an independent bottle shop or bar or, you know, just showcasing uh, what they're passionate about. They're also showcasing some really good breweries. Um, obviously, like, you know, there's also the side now where from a bigger beer approach, like, and I, and I, you know, anyone that's got a little bit of ownership, it's like that also plays out to the, to, the, to the masses a bit more, which brings people in and it showcases things around a lot more. Like, I think, the stuff that you guys are doing on the fields is really, is really fun, really great. I mean, you've got I mean, Secret yourself, got great people working from. So, you know, it, it, it's nice to sort of see different sort of spectrums of size between breweries, but also like kind of keeping it engaging and fun from that side. Um, but yeah, I think London's vibrant and I think it will continue that way. I think really like obviously when, when we can get back up and running properly, I think people are going to really appreciate the more the connection to um, their local brewery or their local tap room or, you know, the people that, they, they want to support and stuff like that so it just I think in where we are right now in 2020 like it, it just keeps it keeps growing and, uh, and I don't think the demand is going to slow down anytime soon so. so basically um, let's say we should expect finally beer or craft beer if you prefer um, becoming I don't want to say like everyone's thing because that would be too much and probably we wouldn't be able to control it if it would be like that. But, you know, like, I finally see for the first time uh, 
consumers of mainstream lagers and um, you know people really into their traditional real ale pump um, um, ales for the first time just not being snobby uh, against craft beer against people like me or you against community caters and find good beers in restaurants and things like that I almost see like and and you know a very uh, open attitude to yeah. uh, to the to, to 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 the community to the industry and you know I, 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 I would love to see really like in a few months, in a few weeks' time, uh, some numbers, try to understand like, are people in Tottenham buying Tottenham beers? Are people in Hackney buying Hackney beers? How they like to talk with the person going in the shop and, you know, I, I, I see these like e-commerce tornado tsunami that really help people to understand where stuff is coming from, how much, um, you know, um, they pay for it and if it's justifiable or if it's not. And, and, and you be definitely someone I would be in touch because uh, it would be very, very interesting to hear, for example, Hackney people, how they buy the beers, like yeah. why, what yeah. the beers are, what, what, what do you think? Like, is it going to be like surprising to see some, some of the data in there? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting point you make, really. I, th I think it's, um, I think, like, you know, from the locality point of view, for people supporting, like, local breweries, like, in an area, stuff like that, but also from, like, out there for, like, the consumers and customers. Um, it, it, it's kind of, it's, you never quite know, like, actually what people's sort of, like, desire and connection is to, to what they're buying and stuff like that. But I think you always sort of get a good feeling for it. Um, certainly since I've started happening, like, my communications with a lot of people um, in the sort of, like, East London uh, sort of pubs, uh, borough, so to speak, it's been, it's been really sort of like nice to see that. And I think also just to use a different example is, you know, the online shop that we've done um, during, during obviously the, the lockdown, um, it's just been like overwhelming to see how many people are ordering cases of beer. Uh, and it's just, yeah, and it's just flying out. And I know that's the same for everyone, really. And it's, it's just a really nice sort of feeling to see, um, you know, to see the local support across the board for, for all the breweries right now that are fighting and, and, and everyone's sort of making sure they can keep the doors open, right? So um, that's, that's a really that was a really, really interesting thing, and I think also what we built on that is that we now know we can actually work with an online shop which we never had before, uh, and it means we can sort of like you know mix things up a little bit from from that side because being so draft uh, heavy, uh, particularly Hackney, we you know we were sort of moving more to like other than sort of cacao and our lager, um, pretty much having you know moving away from cans a little bit and being a bit more draft focused. So this sort of changes the game a little bit, and um, you know I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens when things reopen. Um, but right now, um, I think it's just great to see people wherever they are in London supporting however they want to support. But I think always support who's close to you first. But then also, I mean, I've been ordering, I don't, I don't drink too much at home, um, mainly from being out a lot for work and drinking. But, um, you know, I've been ordering a lot of beer into my house from various breweries around the UK, supporting my boys back on a giant in Bristol. Uh, you can't ignore a day of stuff because it's great. Um, and obviously, you know, and then my, 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 my good friends up in... Um, um, walking stone at exhale um as well so you know it's it's i think there's room for like obviously focusing support um, where you can for local but always show love to the ones who are as well. and since five points best bitter i saw a uh, interesting rise of mini kegs right yeah absolutely well a little exclusive for you on here so uh we hackney no we haven't announced this anyway yet but we are doing mini kegs now no <laughs> so I Thankfully, Pete, my boss, got this off for me today. So I'll, I'll, I feel like I just, I don't know if he's making me like an Instagram influencer or something, but there you go. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm looking for a Mysterious Specs as well, which is uh, one of our newer beers, which we actually did in collaboration with Brewed Dog Dalston, um, which they kind of have as like a house beer. So it's going to be cool to sort of have that and a few others. That, that, we don't know exactly. I think maybe next week I'm going online. Uh, alongside, we've got two new releases um, this week on in Cannes as well, called Bad Moon and Shark Bite as well. So. Yeah, you know, it's, it, we, we've, we're moving with the trends. Um, I actually, during the lockdown, I ordered a, a mini cask from Fine up in Scotland, a Yol, which is one of my favourite cask beers, particularly my time at Euston Tap. I think that cask used to go a lot faster when I was uh, drinking on the other side of the bar. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I got a couple from Five Points as well, Beck, because I was like, you know, you've got to try and pr pretend you're in the Pembury right where you can. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been good. <laughs> and, and it's been interesting, haven't it? Like you're not far from the Pembury, right? You're, you're Hackney Bays as well. Well, I, I know I actually live in Camden, actually. Uh, well, it's Camden, but technically it's a Primrose Hill postcode. 
So if I'm telling my mum, I say Primrose Hill to sound more classy, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's but I've been in, I've actually lived in Camden for almost all my time in London. Um, it was always really accessible to everywhere I worked, and it's still really accessible. But I do, I do, I do like, uh, I do like Hackney and, uh, and Bethnal Green and that surrounding areas. Uh, and you know, Mother Kelly's, as you know well. Uh, you know, I always make an excuse to sort of go in there whenever, whenever. I'm in Finsbury Park right now, and you know I'm usually deciding um, if it's better to say that I'm in Holloway Road, or if I had to decide to say that if I'm in Finsbury Park, because I'm in the Zap Middle, and someone let me notice, and there isn't really any better one between the two. So I'm not just saying I'm in N7, you know, just 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 somewhere over there, and, and... yeah, exactly. Uh, do you want to give a shout out to my man Max Tater who's just joined as well? Victory Vodka, that's the one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> When I was and a Jin, and Jin, and Jin, that's the, the original. <laughs> when I was at Clapton Crafts, I remember we were going quite well with that, and and it was always like um, one of the one of the you know suggestion picks um, that we were pushing hard. So I hope um, I did something good for for Victory as yeah. well. Well, actually, a good variation is actually what Victory are doing up with the guys at Kale is like a joint venture up there. So if if, if anyone's not been up uh, or is in North London up in Walkingstone, I recommend going up there. There's a lot of good things happen up there. I'll, I'll wink and not say any more, but you, you never know where another brewery might turn up there one day. So. Come da Let's go together, Victoria, and in Finsbury when he's, the word is going to get better. Or at we'll make, Yeah, we'll make it happen. I'll look forward to that. I'll be good. <laughs> and, you know, I've got three questions uh, before probably Instagram will start telling you uh, a bit of a time, a bit of a time, and, yeah. and something that is really, really important. And, and first is like for me, is if this situation with pubs close will get longer, are sales reps and you know people then working into sales really have to adapt hard to find different new unusual ways to sell beer and potentially maximize the off trades and, and the e-commerce and stuff? Do you think it's gonna be very hard? Like, what's your feeling with that? Yeah, um, I think it's sort of a, it's, it's sort of a moving, it's, it's a constant moving, like you're spinning the plate basically, because I think when obviously the lockdown happened, and like I say, from the, the online sales to cans and cases of beer, you know, at, at Hackney we do like, direct to people's houses free of charge, and we might try and get out there the same day, the next day if not. Uh, and so we've been really obviously working hard on that and, and pushing through that. I mean, it, even in the last week or so, I've noticed like some pumps reopening for like takeaway pints. Um, and obviously growler fills. So it's interesting to see how that dynamic is going to work until pubs are allowed to reopen. So I think at the minute, it's just sort of like waiting to see, but being ready for anything really. So um, just making sure that we're communicating. I think social media, like I say, is such an important tool. Um, and, you know, we've got a, a, an amazing, um, amazing uh, uh, Bex who does our, our sort of marketing social to Hackney. She's, she's just great at getting it all in the right places. And, uh, you know, it, it's that's so important for communication. Um, because, you know, when you don't have the connection through, you know, the, the bar, the on-premise side where people go in and they can feel it and see it and stuff like that, it, it's the imagery that sort of can, that has to showcase it and bring, make people feel like they're still in a, in a pub or a restaurant or a bar, whatever. Um, but, you know, bring that to their own home or, or to their own sort of social environment that they're obviously they're allowed to have. So. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I guess by start of August, we'll have a better idea, um, you know, because we just don't know what's going to happen. But I think... We're ready, obviously, uh, like specifically from Hackney's point of view, we're ready to go uh, when, when pubs want to reopen. You know, we're, we're making sure we're staying in communication with all the people we work with and some of the people we, we want to work with as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll just, you know, we'll just keep, keep hoping for the best and being, being ready to, to keep offering beer out to people, you know, i.e. with the mini kegs and obviously with our, with our sort of uh, beer. Uh, we're still, you know, we're still doing new releases, you know, we're not sort of standing still and going, we'll just have our core beer until this is over. We want to keep sort of bringing things out and, and making people excited about beer. And, and I think, like I say, there's so many great breweries doing that uh, as well, which are constantly releasing new stuff. And, you know, it's great. You know, it, it means that people always have something excited to do, especially people get even more excited for the postman to turn up now. You know, it's, 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 you know it's positive. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, another question, you probably partially already answered to that. And he's always like, what is the m short, mid-term, to, to, to London beers, like in terms of pubs, breweries, and, 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 and you know, uh, the industry in general. What, what do you think? Like, are we going to see, like, as smallest numbers of players, unfortunately, or maybe not? What's your feeling? 
I mean, I, I hope everywhere can reopen, uh, you know, for breweries, bars, restaurants, tap rooms, everything. I mean, I think the way it's looking, it looks like it's going to be more of a gradual process. Um, certainly, I think places with, uh, with like larger outside space um, will probably be the first. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully, the weather stays great, so when that does happen, people can you know make the most of it with keeping the distance. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think what will come out of this, and, I, and this is just um, you know, this is an appreciation to, to my my history of American beer, and I, I think there's still definitely a room for those brands and, and many other American brands in 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 the UK. Um, but I do think, generally speaking, people will lean a lot more towards uh, locality uh, for beer. Uh, I think we see that during the lockdown, the way people are supporting uh, more than ever. Um, and like I say, there's definitely enough for a share to go around. But I think it's gonna it's gonna make people realise and connect more emotionally with 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 the breweries in either the area they live or or certainly the areas they spend most of their time. Um, and I think that's that's a good thing because. You know, at the end of the day, regardless of where you live, it's always good to support what's 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 local to you, close to you. Um, so I think that's that's what I think is sort of short medium. I do think hopefully, you know, fingers crossed when <clears throat> things can go back to um, as close as possible to what they were before, then we'll you know we'll see an evening out of everything. But I think uh, I do think you know you know if anyone if anyone does fall away, then it won't be without a fight and it won't be without people trying to stop that from happening. Um, I've seen a lot of sort of crowdfunding campaigns for, for places. Uh, again, the place where I've danced many nights away, the Lexington, I, I had to, I, I felt strange I didn't invest for that crowdfunding. So that, yep. that, they, I think they got over like £60,000 and, and that was in two or three weeks. So nice. that's great. And, and there's so many other examples of that as well. So uh, yeah, you know, I think, I think everyone's fighting hard to try and help and protect and look after people. And, you know, if that continues, then I think hopefully we'll, we'll see more positive than negative in, in the long term. So you probably already answered to the question. You were just like, where would you go straight after the lockdown? <laughs> yeah, live. I know, yeah. Um, yeah I, you know, you know, to be honest with you, I think I, I'd, I think I'd, I'd want to go and see as many people as I can in as many places as I can. Uh, I, I, I did think about whether I would give a one bar answer. I think the places I've named already, um, you know where my allegiance lies. But I think uh, all I want to do is go out and see as many faces and see as many bars and see as many bar staff and, and 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 i say drink as many beers i might have to be a little bit careful about that because that could be bad but you know it, it'll just be great to be back out and mix in again and uh you know bring it on basically <laughs> it's 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 a dream uh, now it's it's getting very long and 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 the uncertainty it's a bit like um uh you know uh, consuming to for everyone it just we just want to know like exactly a date or an, an a, a week like a random positioning along the you know the next six months um and not even for 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 organize or too much just as a relief you know yeah. just and um i like to i like to think um i i'm go, i'm always chatting with um people that have lots of beautiful things to say and i'm so glad i managed to do this with you because you said really important things and very inspiring if there are other sales um, you know, beer sales people out there and probably sales in general because you've been very, very clear and very, you know, like honest on what it makes you a good person and, a, you know, a good person, to, a, someone to do business with, I would say. So um, that's... Well, I much appreciated. Pleasure, man. And, and, and you know, like, what's, what's the rest of the day look for you? What are you going to you know do? What? I, I, the, the mini keg's kind of staring at me, so it might happen. We'll see. I'll make sure I don't post it on social media if it does, because like, it's five litres. But, um, you know, probably going to chill out a little bit. We've still got a lot of work to do this week. Like I say, it's been great for having so many uh, things coming through for, for Hackney right now. So a lot to, lot to work on. And, uh, yeah, try and keep a clear head until the weekend. But when it's 26 degrees, beautiful sun for anyone who's not in London right now, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I'm gonna try to escape from my wife, which she wants to go to have a run outside. I'm just trying to slide to yeah. me. You got run to one side, right? Not, 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 not to that side. <laughs> <laughs> I need to change um, the the chords for to my guitar, that, which I haven't played for in five years. I want to get back with it, and we have to cut uh, some extra bigger part of our massive plant that normally is sitting there. And I can't remember what's the name of the actual process, 
Uh, but we're making like five different plants with one plant. I don't know what's the technical name for it. But yeah, busy nine. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let me know when you find out the terms. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's very unusual. But um, um, really, really thank you to did this together. Um, um, we have a, a very like um, large amount of people watching. This means um, we we've been quite um, nice and approachable. And I can't wait to see you. Uh, really, can't wait to see you. Yeah, definitely. Man. I just want to say thank you again for all this you've been doing. You've definitely kept me entertained. Thank you so much for all the other people that have been involved in it as well. It's been great seeing as close as you can to so many faces you'd like to see. And uh, yeah, long may it continue. Keep up the good work. And yeah, I can't wait to see some beers now when it's all over. So. And thank you very much again. And thanks for everyone that were joining us. And, and um, man, this is your stream. I hope I'm going to be able to save it because this is really precious matter. And, and we, we can't lost it. So um, I'm going to try to after after all of this and we'll make it work <laughs> have a fantastic rest of the day man you too mate much appreciate good talking to you and thanks everyone for listening take, cheers take care